Hi, today we will do something different again, and we will build a React.js application in TypeScript. And we will be using this library called Preact, because it's smaller and a little bit nicer in certain areas. And we will be using TypeScript not only on the front end, but also on the back. And on top of that, we will be using this tool called Snowpack, which allows us to use ECMAScript modules uh, directly so we somehow can skip the bundling. So if you're using Snowpack, you may not need something like Webpack or Rollup. We'll be still using Rollup because we need to uh, transpile TypeScript into JavaScript, but that's the only reason for using Rollup in this setup. This setup is somehow lighter than what's available. And for all that, we'll be using uh, Hunsfot as this tool that brings everything together in a nice way. So let's start. So I need to create a project and let's call it Preact. Once it's done, we can open it, the project in VS Code. And from now on, we can just use VS Code. So the first thing we need to do is to install Preact as a dependency. So now something different. We need to go to the package JSON. We need to find the snowpack option. And in the web dependencies, we need to add Preact explicitly. So there is a, a way to do it implicitly, but there are some edge cases that I will explain later. So let's stick to this method for now. So we need to add Preact. And now we need to go to config client index. And the first thing we need to do, we need to rename this file to TSX because we will be creating a React application. We can remove those lines over here. We need to go to the features as well and view. And let's rename this file as well. So these are those, you know, scaffold files. Those files show you how the app is organized. So in Hunsfoot, features is like this directory, which allows you to divide your application into namespaces or into features. So at the, at the beginning, you have only base, but you can add more. And this way you namespace your application to have those modules established. So once we have that, we need to go to the TS config and we need to add these two options to the compiler options so that the TSX is being taken into account. So the first one is JSX and we need to set it to React so that we can use JSX syntax in our uh, TypeScript files. And the second one is JSX factory and we need to use H. So that's the function we, from, we, we converted from JSX into the invocations of, of this particular function. And in the rollup config, we need to just adjust the input. At the beginning it was TS and now it needs to be TSX, this file over here. So still in this file, index TSX, let's create like a, a very basic application. First thing we need is to import two functions, H and render. And we will be importing that from modules preact.js, which is somehow different than usual. This syntax can be also simplified. So it goes beyond the scope of this video. So I'll cover that later. For now, let's stick with this particular syntax. And we need to render our application. So we will just take the app and render it to to the document body, like so. So the last thing we need to do is to go to the base view index file. And here we need to also import the H from, again, modules React.js. And we need to create this um, the simplest possible application. So let's call it app. And this will be, of course, a function. And we will return main and Hello, Preact. It's nothing of that sort. So now we can just press Ctrl T and we can select client. It's already configured in Hunsfeld. And this will start our application. So we are starting rollup here just because we want to transpile TypeScript to JavaScript. That's the only reason. And now the server starts on the port 
uh, 101. So if we go there, we should have our application working. So now let's just adjust a little bit the, uh, we'll add a class here and let's say I want to have a padding around, uh, it's nicer. So we have this very basic Preact application written in TypeScript. So let's add another element. This will be the routing, the client routing. So for that, we need to stop the server and we will install this library called Vouter or Vouter uh, Preact. Very simple client routing library and it's available for both regular React and Preact. And it's very small and use hooks if you if that's your thing. So now we have it, we need to do the same thing as before as with Preact. So we need to go back to the packet JSON file and under Snowpack, we need to define it that we want to use this um, library. So now we can start the client again. It's still working. Let's just test some changes. So with uh, routing, it works. Let's add uh, the navigation bar. So this should be probably flex. And here we will use um, LE and let's give it some margin. And inside we will use a link, but we need to use, so since this is on the client, we need to use a special component for that. We cannot use anchor tag as with the regular HTML. So we will import that. And we also need this another component called route so that we can display once a particular link is clicked, we can display a particular component or thing for that link. And we will be importing that from modules again and water um, preact like that. So once we have that, we can now use it and we can say link and I can have ref, say about and let's add some class. So this would be text blue 500 and on hover text blue 800. And this will be about. So we have the about and if I click, nothing really happens because I need now the route component. So if I say route and path, so it must correspond to this one we defined for the link. And let's say, So now if I, that's not the error, I just need to, we should just go back to the root. So now if I click, we have this basic uh, routing implemented. So let's do something more complex, slightly more complex here. So how about uh, params? So let's add another link and let's call it welcome. And here we will say welcome and we will pass a name. So again, you need to go back to the root. I will configure that later. This is a small thing. Here in the route, we need to define welcome and let's say, say it's the, and here instead of a text, we will use a function directly. So we will say params and this function will return h2. Let's add a class of text XL and it will say welcome params name. I made a mistake into inverted, of course. So you are invoking Zaiste, so a specific name in the link, and here in the route you catch it like that. So if I click it, and here as you can see, it's, uh, it's the link. You cannot change it here yet because. The, the server is not configured to go back to the root, but we will improve it. Okay, here, as you can see, you can do something even more fancy. So we can do, <clears throat> we can do structure. So we can say, give me the name from the params so that we can use the name directly. It works as before. Finally, let's use um, a function or a component. So we can say a path and let's say dashboard. And here we will be using a dashboard component, which doesn't exist yet. And here we will um, trigger that. So we will use dashboard and we a dashboard like that. We don't have this component yet, so we will create it. 
dashboards and again text XL. And now if I click, I have this dashboard ready. So that's pretty nice. But let's do something even more uh, complicated here. And let's see how we can do lazy loading and how we can use this uh, suspense component from React so that we can, while we wait for a particular component, we can display something in between. So in order to do that, we need um, a small adjustment in package uh, JSON. So instead of taking just Preact, we need to use Preact Compact. So we don't need to install additional library, but we need to tell Snowpack that we want to use this Compact, this Compact part of the React library, which stands for compatibility. Uh, so compatibility with React.js. So we only need to add this here. We need to restart our server. And now if we go back to our index, we can now import Suspense. And let's import lazy as well. I can show you how to do lazy loading. And this time it will be modules preact slash compat JS. And now we can use it. So first of all, we need to create another link. So let's call it, uh, let's call it That. So we have it, we need to add the route, so the path will be account, as before. And here we will, we will use account component, which doesn't exist yet. And on top of that, we will use suspense. So we will wrap this component in suspense and we will provide the fallback, which will be simply a div, which displays the loading. So now we just need to create this account. So we will um, do account and this will be a function and we will import this from another file. So we will return import and let's say account like that. This file doesn't exist yet, so we need to create it. So we need to create in the same directory. So this will be account tsx as, as before. And this will be a pretty simple file. So we will need to import h again from modules preact.js and we will export default a function which will return a very simple component. Let's add P as well. Something of that sort. So now if you go back here, it's uh, we can import it from that other file. But on top of that, let's create a very simple uh, function called sleep, which will take milliseconds as a number, and it will create this timeout. Timeout. Uh, Resolve and MS. Something of that sort. And here we will await for three seconds. So this needs to be async. And on top of that, we need to wrap it into a lazy function. So now, now we need to restart the server. The server for the client part, which is rollup. Let's see what happens. So now if I click about, welcome dashboard, it works. But now if I click account, it should wait three seconds while displaying this loading message we defined uh, as a fallback, and then it should display the account. There you have it. It works. So this shows you how quickly you can build a React.js application using Preact which is, uh, in my opinion, a nicer al alternative to the actual React library. And then you can use TypeScript. And then everything is nicely put together by Hunsfeld. And on top of that, we are using Snowpack, which makes using those modules somehow nicer. So let me know your thoughts. I can explore this even further. We can add some... I was thinking about connecting it with the backend as well, which will be also written in TypeScript. So if that's something that's interesting for you, let me know in the comments. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.